Welcome in psychology students, Professor Zeeb here, and we're going to do a short lecture on Sigmund Freud's psychosexual development and his stages. So hopefully you've read the short little vignette that I did post on the web page there, so make sure you read that and grasp that before we move on. I'm also going to mention that, or suggest that if you have any little ones in the room to sort of uh, at this point, remove them because we're going to be talking about a lot of adult stuff in this particular section of the lecture. It gets very adult oriented here. So if you would remove the little ones at this point. All right, so let's get into Freud's psychosexual stages. So remember, uh, he believes that a lot happens in childhood. And during childhood, we go through a lot of sexual type issues. And so that's kind of what we're going to talk about here. We're going to start off with Freud's first stage, which is called the oral stage. The age range here typically is from birth to about one and a half years of age. And so what he's saying here is that infants derive intense psychosexual pleasure from stimulation of the mouth. So that psychosexual energy is focused on the mouth. This may explain why kids, young children, like to suck on things. For example, there are fingers, breastfeeding, their binky, that kind of thing. And so in other words, what he's basically saying is that that is bringing this intense, intense gratification during that first year or so. Well, if you read the section previously to this, you, I mentioned that sometimes you can get stuck or fixated. So what typically would happen here is that it may create some concerns with dependence and independence. And we may find that the person uh, consistently stimulates their mouth. For example, maybe a chain smoker, or maybe they drink and they indulge in drinking too much. So Freud would say, well, something happened around this time where they kind of held on to the oral stage and never moved on appropriately. So in other words, we think that, or at least Freud, I should say, thought that things sort of focus on the mouth during this time. We get a little bit older, it gets a little weirder, and we go to what's called the anal stage which is from age one and a half to about three. Now he's saying that that psychosexual energy is focused on the anus as the pleasure center. So you can kind of see some common sense here that typically around two or three, most kids go through potty training. And so once again, that's not a coincidence, what Freud is basically saying, because we're dealing with that stuff. So in other words, some of our sexual interests involved expelling feces and retaining feces and feeling the pleasure of that sort of experience. What he basically uh, taught was that how you come out of potty training and that whole experience may translate into certain personality styles. So you may have heard the expression, oh my gosh, my boss is so anal, that kind of thing. So some fixation issues we that Freud believed uh, often surround this experience, whether your parents were overly critical towards you or too lenient in terms of your potty training as an example. So it could translate into being really orderly and stingy, which is how we would sort of imply being anal, what that means. But also uh, Freud believed it felt, felt that it would translate into being sloppy or wasteful. So for example, if your parents were not too strict during this time, they let you run wild, use your imagination what that means. Uh, this person may have become a sloppy sort of slob, if you will. So in other words, it seems to be related to self-control a lot, and Freud believed that's what we were kind of going through. So in other words, it could lead to stubbornness or being wasteful, et cetera, et cetera. We get a little bit older, we go to the third stage, which is the phallic stage, phallic meaning penis, of course. The age range here is from three to about five or six. So now he's saying the psychosexual energy is focused on our genitals. This may explain, if you believe in this, why young boys around four or so experiment with masturbation or like to rub themselves. For example, I have kind of an embarrassing story of my nephew when he was this age. Uh, one of his favorite toys of all time was a rocking horse, and he would ride that thing day and night. I mean, we literally had to peel him off it at night, and if he rode the horse just right, you know what I'm saying, regardless of being a little facetious here. In other words, this may explain some of those behaviors that we see young children dealing with at this time. Okay, so a lot of times there's an ex experimentation with the genitals at this point. 
Well, a couple things can happen, according to Freud, if you're a boy or a girl. If you are a boy, it is the very famous Oedipus Complex, which he borrowed from Greek tragedy, where basically the boy falls madly in love with his own mother. So what happens is that <clears throat> his energy is focused on his genitals, and his love for his mother becomes erotically tinged. Remember, I'm not saying a, a warm, motherly love. We're, full, we're talking full-on incestuous. And he sees dad as a rival, someone he would actually like to eliminate. In fact, Freud borrowed this from a Greek tragedy where the, the son murders his father and marries his mother. So what we're saying is he falls madly in love with mom. These aggressive desires make the boy afraid that his father will retaliate. In other words, when his dad finds out my true intentions for his wife, he's going to be very upset, to say the least, and he's actually going to castrate me. The reasoning here is that the boy reasons that uh, women basically had a penis at one time and they did something wrong. It was chopped off, basically. So I don't want this to happen to me, and he called it castration anxiety. So the point is, is that the castra castration anxiety, worrying about this happen in terms of the retaliation, is stronger than the boy's desires for his own mother, and thus that allows him to give up his wish to possess her. So in other words, that's how mo most boys typically would uh, resolve this sort of tension. Once again, very controversial. My question is, where is the research that supports this? I personally don't agree with this. But uh, Freud actually believed that. Now, if you're female, he believed you would go something through something called the electric complex. A little bit different here. This one's not as clear in his writings, but he definitely touched on it. And he believed that the girl's first object of love is also her mother. However, during this time, the phallic stage, the girl sort of... Uh, discovers, you know, for example, seeing dad in the shower, or mom in the shower naked, that dad has a penis and mom does not, and that, well, you know, she must have had one at one time and something happened, doesn't really remember it, but I was punished for some reason. And so because of this, you know, along with some other sort of swirling issues that they're dealing with at that time, they fall in love with their own father. And he basically called that penis envy. In other words, what he's saying is that she reasons she must have had a penis at one time, blames her mother for apparent castration, and these disappointments lead to loss of love for her mother and increased love for her father. So he's saying it's erotically tinged to fall in love with dad because he literally has a penis. Some of our neo-Freudians would say, well, at this time, women didn't have any social power. They couldn't vote. They couldn't go to college. So maybe they were envying uh, the power that went with having a male organ at that time, which is more believable in my opinion. But Freud basically said they're, they're envying an actual penis here. Because penis envy carries no threat of retaliation, where castration anxiety is very threatening and motivates the boy to renounce his desires, the little girl fears loss of love for her mother's love, which motivates her to resolve the complex. So it's a little bit different how he explains that and how it's sort of uh, resolved. If things progress normally, we would then go to what's called the latency stage. Latent basically means dormant. By the way, the age frames here, five or six to about 12. So in other words, this takes us through elementary school up to puberty for most kids. Freud believed that the sexual stuff takes a break. Uh, it's, it's a, the, you know, our sexual interest is suppressed at this time, according to Freud. Maybe it's due to the formal schooling era that we're going through. However, um, some of the research kind of contradicts that, so I don't know if I'm a believer of that. But quite possibly that energy may be channeled into other areas of our life, such as sports, hobbies, school. And that's why it doesn't really show up during this time. I'm, I'm going to let you make up your own opinion on that and your, your own mind in terms of what's happening. So in other words, kids are not sexual during this time, which I disagree. But then, according to Freud, we become teenagers and we re-enter or we go into the genital zone. What I'm saying is that the energy is now focused back on our genitals. So theoretically, this is why masturbation would reoccur during this time and we become interested in the opposite sex, as Freud basically taught. 
or I'm not saying I necessarily agree with that. Uh, this is where we develop that interest and things kind of progress from, from that point on. So the point is, is that <clears throat> most people normally progress through these stages, dealing with all these different issues and so forth. Remember, at any point, you could get hung up and become fixated where it may dominate your you know, emotions or your behavior or your moods and things like that and create differences in personality. So that's kind of why we're talking about it in this chapter because this could change your developmental course in terms of who you are as a person. So there's the stages, guys. Make sure you know those. And uh, once again, it's a very controversial theory, a world-famous theory, by the way, and pretty interesting stuff. My, once again, in my opinion, where is the research that supports this? I just, I'm just not on board, or on board personally with this one, but like I said, I'll allow you to make up your own mind. All right, so if you have any questions about this, guys, just email me, and we'll see you online.